you go up for the offering, and then you're going to stand. Yeah, I think they just
be with you today. It's a wonderful day. We're glad to be back here today. Now, this will be the last Sunday that we'll be in the uh, CLC, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute, but appreciate you being a part of this. It's, uh, it's, it's fun to get traditional and contemporary together every once in a while, and, and we just want to remind ourselves that we are one church, and I'll, I'll speak more to that in just a few minutes. We've got so many announcements to lift up. It is a busy, busy week. This is the week of the garage sale, and I've uh, I said the time's wrong at the early service. The uh, garage sale is this Friday, this Saturday. Call up the church office if you need us to pick up some stuff, but we'll start setting up, probably start late Wednesday night, third, all day Thursday, be setting up for the garage sale. It is a missions garage sale. It will go to support the um, Methodist Children's Home in Jackson and the Wesley Foundation here at MSU. Those are the two causes that the missions committee has given this, these funds to. So if you have good junk, bring it. If you want to buy good junk, come Friday. The early bird special, $5, starts noon Friday. Then uh, open to 1-6 Friday, 7.30 Saturday morning. They'll open back up, and they try to be out of here by lunchtime on Saturday. So also next Saturday is a big children's and family event uh, at the... Gosh, can't, got so many things in the announcement, I can't even find it all. Uh, it, it will be... Oh, Family Olympics. There it is. Uh, 10 to 1 next Saturday at the Sportsplex. There'll be games. There'll be prizes. There'll be hot dogs. be a lot of fun for that. So a lot going on next Saturday. Let's try to get us to next Saturday. Uh, on the front of the bulletin, you find the music program that's starting back up. You see the time for children's choir, the time for youth choir, a new time for youth choir on Sunday evening. Inside your bulletin, you find a list of all the classes we'll be starting up over the next several weeks. Have a bunch of classes on Wednesday night, but we also have other classes, other Bible studies throughout the week that you can be a part of. So please take note of that because most of these will be starting over the next two or three weeks or so. I have to check my notes here. Wednesday night, blessing of the backpacks. As we get ready to start school, some of our kids start school Thursday morning. That's hard to believe, but it is here. And so blessing of the backpacks, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock in the sanctuary. It's a, a very special time praying for, praying for our students, praying for our teachers, praying for our families, and having a, a particular time of blessing their backpacks as they go off to school. No dinner this Wednesday. The dinners will start a week from Wednesday, and we'll be on our regular Wednesday schedule then. But this Wednesday, blessing of the backpacks in the sanctuary at 6 o'clock. The uh, police department's night out is Tuesday night at uh, the Sportsplex. Come and support them. If you volunteered to bring cookies, bring them to the church office Monday or Tuesday, and we will carry them out there. First Methodist Church is having a cookie table at the police night out trying to show our support for our police officers and for, for our city. So uh, if you're bringing the cookies, just bring them, and we will get them there. See what else is going on. There are other events. There are a lot of youth events this week, so please take note of that. Need to give you a report on, on, on Donna Kelly, our church secretary. She did, is doing a little better today. Uh, did much better yesterday, but she's still got a long way to go. Be a, it will still be a, probably at least a month before she could possibly think about coming back to work. So uh, just keep her in your prayers. Keep her family in your prayers. Keep us in your prayers because we are trying our best. And just be patient with us in the office because uh, she, she finally got kind of alert enough that we could ask her questions on where she hid all the things that are in the office. And we're starting to find them. But uh, we, are, we are doing the best we can. If you want to help us in the office, uh, let us know if you know of a way, if you want to know a way that you can help Donna. Uh, come talk to us, and we'll be glad to share, talk to you about that as well. But we're continuing to pray for her and, and look forward to her getting well and getting back with us. But it is going to take a few weeks for that to happen. Glad that you're here to share in this service of worship. We'll have communion today. Uh, the communion will be by intention. We'll have three stations, and the ushers will guide you by each station. We do have the altar. Uh, if you'd like to stop and pray after you've taken communion, you're, you're welcome to kneel before you go back to your seat. Also, if you have a communion offering, just come and lay it on the altar. Our communion offering goes to our local missions. Those are the people in our community that we help through the work of this church. And we help people just about every week. People come by and we help in various ways as we can try to be the church in the community in which we live. I believe that's all the announcements, but glad that you are here to be a part of us today. I ask that you take your bulletin and turn to the opening prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God, 
To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Our opening hymn is To God Be the Glory. If you would stand, the words will be on one of these two screens up there. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you that you bless us in so many ways. Accept these our gifts. We bring them in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated.
reading from Paul's letter to the, church, the Colossian church, third chapter. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with Him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of the Creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, no circumcised or uncircumcised, no barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in, and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thought about just leaving that scripture there and going straight into the communion service because Paul has just about said what needs to be said. As I told you last week, I wanted to do these services together because we are one church in Jesus Christ. And even though we may have different styles of music and, and meet in different places and times, we are still one church. And it is Jesus Christ who unites us. And there is no more powerful symbol of our unity in Christ than the service of Holy Communion. These elements, this bread, this cup, bring us together. They, they, they symbolize for us the body and the blood and the power and the presence which unite us as one church. And as Paul says it so well in that 11th verse, here there is no contemporary or traditional, no Democrats or Republicans, no Yankees or Southerners, no Bulldogs or Rebels. For Christ is all and is in all. Now I know that's not exactly what he said, but that's exactly what he was saying. I do believe it's kind of serendipitous that these lectionary passages are coming to us at this time of year when we are so stirred up in our hearts and souls. Uh, you know, we get too caught up in the sound and fury that comes from both political conventions. We, we hear things, some of them close by, some of them around the world, that frightens us. There are people in this world that want to divide us. There is, there is no doubt about that. There are things that divide us, but there are people who are trying to exploit that. And there are people who want to divide us. And sometimes with all these things weighing on us, and they're real things, and, and we're human beings, we can't help but let a, them weigh on us sometimes. Sometimes we need to hear Paul's word to remind us just who we are and what we're supposed to be about. And, and, and we don't have to talk about politics. If politics makes you uncomfortable, we can talk about football if we want to get really blasphemous. And uh, Paul says it. We are first and foremost Christians. And as Paul and John Wesley noted on many occasions, we, even as Christians, can disagree on many things in this world. But there is no disagreement on how we're supposed to treat each other. Going back to Paul. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. That's put up with each other. And forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity.
Now that passage doesn't come with a bunch of exceptions. It doesn't say, well, do these things except during football season. There's no exception here that says, do these things unless you think the other person is cheating on you. It doesn't say, do these things except when you're right and they aren't. This is who Christians are all the time. Meanness, nastiness, ugliness are not gifts of the Spirit and they are not Christian virtues. And if we claim to be Christians, then we are Christians first and foremost. We are Christians all the time. And Paul doesn't say it here directly, but really what this whole passage, really this whole letter is about is reminding us that everything we do in all times and all places, whether we're right or whether we're wrong, everything we do is a witness to the world about Jesus Christ. People are watching us. People are listening to us. People know what we do, and they know what church we walked out of today. And yes, Christians may still disagree about a lot of things. And we may agree on the problems and, and still not come to exact agreement on what the solution to the problem is. But the fact remains, our attitude, our tone of voice, the words we choose, how we ha handle our anger and our fear and our frustration, they all speak more loudly than our ideas and beliefs. And all of it, it doesn't just affect our witness. It is our witness. You know, either the football season or the political season may bring me back to this topic sometime later on in the fall. But for the moment, I want to give Paul the last word because he sums it up very well. This is the next part of the passage I just read. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish someone else. Sometimes we do disagree. Sometimes we admonish. Sometimes we have to teach. With all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever we do, everything we do, is a witness. Whatever we, think we do, everything we do is either thanking God or not thanking God for all of His blessings. Everything we do, even if we post it anonymously on a Facebook board or a sports message board, it comes back to us. And it tells the world what we think about the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you are patient with us. We thank you that you forgive us when we fall short. Help us to receive this holy meal as a reminder of your Son and how much He has given for us. And let it also be a reminder of our unity in Him, of our being His followers, His church. And let us go out from this place today knowing that in all we say, all we do, all we yell, all we post, all we think, that we are followers of Christ disciples of Christ and witnesses to the good news of Christ. It's in His holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. The Methodist table is an open table and any who would come and share this means of grace are welcome to participate. 
We do have gluten-free crackers and separate juice for those who have that allergy, and we take that seriously. Uh, we will, if someone cannot come forward, the ushers will tell us, and we will come out, and, and, and one of our pastors will come to you. We'll end up having three stations. Each of our pastors will have a station for each section, and the ushers will guide you as we receive the communion. Let us prepare our hearts by turning in our bulletin to our prayer of confession. Let's pray this prayer together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law, and we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are Now I invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving as is printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, my body is broken for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. I want to ask my fellow pastors and our acolytes to come at this time. We had hoped to have, planned to have Will Reedy, who is the worship director for The Connection, doing our music today, but Will's grandfather died over the weekend, and Will is with his family in New Albany. We're very honored to have Emily Mabry, who's a very talented member of our Connection Band, who will be bringing our music during communion today. come at the direction of the ushers.
forever, friend and savior. Would you turn again to your bulletin to the prayer of thanksgiving? Let's pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 102, and you may stand. from the sanctuary. Thank you for, for stepping out of your comfort zone. So we have this chance to remind ourselves we are one church in Christ. We'll go back to normal next week, but we are still one church in Christ. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you that you are with us as we go out into the world. Now let us go in peace. Let us go in strength. Let us go in the power of your love. Let's go in the grace of your Son. Let's go in the hope of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you. Thank you.
Thank you, Emily. That was great.